Welcome back guys to my channel and if you're new here my name is Jamie and I am a senior software engineer and I teach you everything that you need to know about code. So if you're looking at this video right now we're going to be going over Tailwind CSS. What is it? How good is it? Why should you use it? All that good stuff. So before anything make sure you take a moment, give me a thumbs up, comment below. I want to know your feedback, I want to know your thoughts on the way that I teach. If you like what I'm doing as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications so that way I can continue to make content just like this. So let's get started, guys. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go to the tailwindcss.com website. We're going to click on Get Started here. And, well, let's talk about Tailwind, right? So Tailwind is a utility-first uh, framework. So in traditional coding, uh, or web development, I should say, when you want to create a, you know, a nice little component that looks like this chit chat component here, what you're going to do more often than not is you're going to create a, um, I guess, some HTML logic here. So a div and then another div with an image inside of it, another div, etc. And you're going to have certain classes for each uh, that styles each piece of this component, right? Now those uh, classes are written something like this, and this is done all inside of a CSS file, okay? But with Tailwind, we can do this in a much simpler way without ever having to jump into the uh, CSS style sheet itself. So that's the cool thing about Tailwind CSS, right? So with Tailwind, you can redo the same exact component all within the code itself, like so. So literally, if I were to copy and paste this right here into my empty project here, and then I just save it, by me doing that, I should get a nice brand new component that looks just like that, minus the image. So let me just copy the, uh, the image here. Whoops, where'd the image go? Oh, okay, the image says logo.svg, but I do not have that image, so I can get it by, I guess, inspecting the element. Let me just do that for a second here. And we can just copy this element and paste it here in place. And that should do it. Let's see if that did it, and there it is. So it was that easy for us to replicate that same exact component, and we did not even have to touch the CSS, guys. No CSS, we didn't jump into that styling, and the reason why is because if we take a look at the, um, at the HTML code here, you'll notice that we have a bunch of different classes inside of the element, right? So one of these classes, P-6, what does that do? That actually does padding all around and then six is actually the sizing scale. So if we look at the uh, Tailwind documentation here, we scroll down a little bit. Um, they have something, let me see if we can find it, uh, spacing, here we go. So if you look at the spacing, uh, excuse me, if you look at the spacing here, you'll notice that there's a bunch of different numbers and it equals a different value, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, etc. If we scroll down, this here is the default spacing scale. So in our case, when we're doing P6, we're referencing this number six, which is 1.5 rem, that's the equivalent. So we're having, basically in pixels, we're having a padding of 24 pixels all around. So that's what this one class does, okay? So all of these classes are basically classes that can be reused within every HTML element that you have. So doing it this way, you can very, very easily as a developer built out a reusable component extremely fast. It'll speed up your development. And that's why Tailwind is very, very powerful. So that being said, I'm just gonna erase it here. Okay, it's all gone now. What we wanna do here is we're going to, I guess just to prove it to you guys about how fast the development process can be, I'm literally going to make a clone of the Tailwind website, or at least the header, and then we're going to begin there, right? So I'm going to inspect the element, and my objective is going to be to grab this nice-looking header. And the way I would do that is I would 
click here on the uh, source, copy the element. Now back here in our code, we're just going to create a, let's create a uh, comment here where we're going to say begin header. And then another comment that says end header, just so that we know that, well, this begins and this ends the header, right? So now I created an header uh, HTML element. And then inside of there, I am going to paste that header that we just copied from the website. So remember, no CSS involved. I did not jump into the CSS style sheets whatsoever. So what this does now that it uh, finished recompiling, most likely, is it literally just created that same header. OK, so now the only thing that's missing here is we need to change the background color so that it looks nice and blue, just like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this body class that they have here. I'm assuming this is what has the uh, the background color because it says here BG white, but then it says dark colon BG slate 900. So what we're going to do is we are going to wrap this around a section. And in our section, we are going to say class and then we're going to paste that in there and we're going to grab where it begins and where it ends for the header and we're going to paste that inside. OK, so by us doing that. Let's see what happens here. So it's just reloading. Let it recompile. Then look at that. We literally have almost the same uh, header from Tailwind CSS website with the CSS classes as well. We didn't even jump into the CSS at all. Right. So now there are some subtle differences. So, for instance, uh, this is all inside of a uh, container. So it's pushed to the center. We're going to try to do that. Let's replicate that. So how we do this is most likely going to be we're going to create a wrapper div here and then we're going to copy where it begins and where it ends. We're going to paste it in there. And in this wrapper div, we're going to give it a class of container. OK, because that's one of these uh, tailwind classes as well. And if you see it pushed everything to a container, but towards the left side, right? So the container has a set width uh, by default. So now what we want to do is we're going to hit space and we're going to make it push it to the center by using MX auto, which is a tailwind class that it sets the margin on the X axis to auto. OK, so if we do this correctly, everything inside of this div should be pushed to the center. So there it is. So look at that. We literally have a replica of tailwind CSS header and that was extremely fast, right? And just to prove it to you guys, if I uh, create a main component here, now this is going to be where the primary content goes. So let's call it a primary content area. So we're just going to say begin primary content area. And then we're just going to end the primary content area here. So you'll notice immediately if I give it a class and let's just uh, Let's see what what colors they have so we can uh, make this reusable. So if we look at the Tailwind documentation and we scroll down a little bit, you'll see where it says colors. So this gives us all the different uh, colors that it comes with out of the box. So every single color here you'll see it has slate, gray, zinc, neutral and so forth. All the way down, you'll see a nice, you know, a nice amount of colors that we can use. Now, each color actually has a number of different shades here. So it begins with the number 50. So let's just say we're looking for the color red. It begins with the number 50, and that's a very light shade of red. And then it ends with the number 900, which is on the darker side, and that's a very dark shade of red. So let's say we wanted to pick a color, I don't know, uh, 400 here. In order for us to actually set the background to this color, all we would have to do is in this main class, we're going to say BG hyphen. So BG for background. Now we want to give it the color. So in this case, the color was red, followed by a hyphen and then the number, which would be 400, right? So if we look here, this is going to be the color of the primary content area. So now there's another class in Tailwind that I know of. It's going to 
make this uh, primary content area the size of your screen. It's called H hyphen screen. So if we come back here, look at what we just did, guys. We basically just replicated the Tailwind CSS website. It was simple to do. We did not jump into the CSS whatsoever. And if we hover over here, look, we get cool effects like a hover change of color, right? So let me right click here and inspect the element real quick. Now, okay, so if I inspect the element, you'll notice that there is a pseudo, uh, this is what we call a pseudo class. So it says hover followed by a colon followed by a class. So it's saying on hover, we want the text to change to a sky of 500, a sky blue of 500, okay? So that's why when we hover, it changes to a, a sky blue of 500. And we can check the colors over here. If we look for sky and we look for 500, this is the color that it's taking, okay? So this is one of the cool benefits of Tailwind. So there's a number of different things you can do. Uh, we can do spacing, like I mentioned before, there's a scale here and you can see all the different spacing. You can do margin padding, you can do, you know, flex box and grids and pretty much anything you can do with CSS, you can do all within the HTML element itself. So it's really cool, guys. I suggest you guys definitely check it out. This is as far as I'm going to go with this tutorial because I don't want to keep on replicating the Tailwind CSS website. However, this was just a very, very uh, basic idea for you guys to get uh, an understanding of how simple it is for you to use Tailwind CSS, how beneficial it is, and the fact that you don't have to jump into the CSS itself is a huge time saver. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit me with a like, hit that, hit that uh, subscribe button and the bell for notifications. I'll continue to make videos just like this and hopefully you guys like my content. I am looking to build up as much subscribers as I can. So if you can help out, that would be much appreciated. You know, even give me a comment below and give me some feedback. That's definitely appreciated as well. Till next time, guys. Thanks for watching.